Welcome to ICANA webinar series for English language teachers. My name is Graciela Martin, and I'm very happy to host the second edition of this uh, webinar series. On today's talk, our presenters, Andrea Arfini and Maria Eugenia Andreani, both ICANA teachers, will be sharing uh, their best practices on how to teach young learners at ICANA in a virtual environment. Let me tell you a little bit about Andrea and Eugenia. Andrea is uh, a teacher of English, graduated from Instituto Olga Cosettini in Rosario, Santa Fe. She has been teaching uh, children, adolescents, and adult courses at ICANA for over 10 years. Uh, she has uh, taken a course, a 10-week course, on teaching young learners, teaching English young learners, to young learners, uh, a course delivered by the University of Oregon and sponsored by the US State Department. Maria Eugenia Andriani uh, is a, a translator, uh, graduated from Universidad Nacional de la Plata. She has been teaching children and adult courses at ICANA for three years. She has also taken a, a course, an eight-week course, uh, on how to teach uh, English to young learners uh, at the University of Oregon, a course sponsored by the US State Department. Both Andrea and Eugenia uh, are members of uh, ICANA team of developers, the team that designs and develops materials for ICANA teaching department. So without further ado, Join me in welcoming Andrea and Eugenia. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Grace. So, hello, everybody. How are you? Um, you know, due to the ongoing pandemic, classes have become uh, virtual across the globe, and this has posed many challenges for teachers, especially for those of young learners. So. Uh, first of all, we'd like to know a little bit about your experience uh, when teaching online and especially when teaching young learners. So now on your screen, you will get a poll with four questions. Um, please send your answers. Okay, so in a moment, uh, when the poll is finished, we will be able to see the results. Okay, so Anne, let's take a look. Uh, the good thing is that teachers here, uh, most of the teachers here uh, teach kids and um, <laughs> they also like great. teaching kids. Great. <laughs> Which, <laughs> which gives us hope. Um, they are also comfortable with teaching kids online. That's great. Yes. That's wonderful news. But apparently, sometimes they find difficulties when trying to choose engaging activities. Mm -hmm. So yes. um, today, we'd, we'd like to address these challenges by uh, presenting some activities. So. Andre, can you tell me what this session will be about? Yes, yeah, we will share yeah, with all of you some practical activities yeah, for young learners aged eight through 10 yeah, in online classes. Mm -hmm. And how will we do this? Well, we will be showing some uh, samples of activities yeah, and we will also invite you to participate in some of them. Great. And why will we do this, Andre? Well, we all know that teachers love to help one another. Yeah. So we think it's a good idea yeah, to share with you some activities yeah, that we have used in our classes at ICANA, classes online, yeah, and have proven to be really engaging. Great. Thanks, Andre. But before getting into the activities, 
we'd like you to do some brainstorming. Um, you're going to answer the question you can see on the screen. What are the key characteristics of young learners? Um, where are you going to send these answers? Well, in a second, we will be sharing with you uh, a link via chat box. When you access this site, you will find the question, as you can see it here. And then below at the bottom of the page, you will find a box where you can enter your answers. So you will write your answers there. And uh, to send them, please click on answer. So, um, let's see. So Grace will send you the link via chat box. Remember that the box to send your answers appears at the bottom. Ah, send the link, please. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, sure, sure. Yes. Um, so here it goes. Okay, so once you start sending your answers, we will be able to see them on the screen. You can send as many answers as you like. Great. Here goes the first one. Fast, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Restless, yeah. Wow, talkative. Short attention span, that's a good one. Mm, yeah. Full oh, of energy. Full of energy, yeah. They mm. are. They love movement. Smart, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, wow. cheerful, nice. Okay, look at all the answers. Active. Great. Wow. Here to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Intelligent. Okay. They have lots of enthusiasm. Ready right. to work. Wow. That's why we like them so much. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, great. So, um, great answers. Let's see. They tend to be distracted. That's right. Fond of role playing, right? It's movement. movement. Yes, movement appeared many times. Yeah, yes. Okay, great. So great. Um, we can agree that some of the key characteristics of young learners are the following. Uh, as you can see on the slide, and as you have um, answered in the, um, in the cloud, children are kinesthetic, uh, they are visual, they are also tactile and auditory. Um, but they also like, they all, and they also love uh, social interaction, they enjoy challenges and games, and they need repetitions and routines. So, uh, Andre, um, would you like to tell us a little bit more about yeah. this? Let's go deeper into these characteristics, yeah? Um, kids are kinesthetic. What does that mean? What does kinesthetic mean? Well, as we all know, yeah, children love to move around. Yeah, they are active. 
They are full of energy. They can't sit still for a long time. So TPR activities, that is to say total physical response activities, are essential when teaching young learners. Some examples yeah, are the following. Uh, the well-known Simon Says, yeah, it's fun to see yeah, kids perform the instructions we give them. Yeah, and they enjoy watching their partners playing all together. Yes, for example, uh, if the topic is food, we can play Simon Says with cooking verbs, right? Now, let's bear in mind that with this activity, kids also practice their listening skills since they have to follow oral instructions. Another example could be charades. Yeah? Again, if the topic is food, they can act out some actions such as set the table, uh, make a sandwich, open the fridge, yeah? uh, cook a meal. Mm -hmm. Another example of a kinesthetic activity would be um, to play go fetch or scavenger hunt. Yeah? If we are dealing with the topic of food, we can ask them, for example, to go fetch something they have in, in their fridge. And well, it's common to see students rush yeah, to the kitchen and rush back yeah, to show yeah, their food items to the class. Yeah? Another example could be yeah, making gestures while listening to a song or a chant. Yeah? We all have seen kids yeah, uh, getting, getting uh, engaged when making gestures. Yeah? In a virtual environment to do this, yeah, as you might know, uh, it's essential to have kids turn the cameras on, right? And they love yeah, to see their partner's cameras on too. Mm -hmm. They feel more motivated. Okay, but Maru also mentioned that kids are visual. Yes, and what does that mean? That visual learners are learners who are likely to remember and learn what they see better than what they hear. Yeah, and this could um, include being exposed, uh, for example, to different colors, tones, uh, brightness, contrast, and shapes. Right. Now, to keep kid, uh, to keep kids engaged, yeah in the class, it's a good idea to make uh, use of brightly colored visuals, for example, realia, such as real toys or real fruit, yeah? pictures such as flashcards, photos, yeah? posters, and also puppets and masks. Now, uh, if we ask them, for example, to make their own flashcards, yeah, puppets and masks, we can foster kids' imagination and creativity. Yeah? We can have them use yeah, the, their own productions to act out a conversation or, or a story yeah? or to play a game. Yeah? Here on this slide, yeah, uh, you can see on the left um, a group of students yeah, making a group virtual poster on the topic of food. Yeah, on the right, you can see a student showing her own production yeah, on cardboard. Uh, on the next slide, this slide, yeah, you can see students showing some masks they have made themselves. Okay. Great, thanks, Andre. So another activity that we usually work with at our in our virtual in our virtual classes at Ikana is this one. Um, what picture is missing? So this is an idea, an activity that you can use in different stages of a class. For example, you could use it to practice vocabulary or also to review vocabulary. The idea is that you show students a series of pictures or flashcards and you give them um, and you can give them some seconds or a minute to memorize the items on the pictures. Uh, then you're going to ask students to um, 
to mention what item is missing. I mean, there's an item that has been removed. So this, uh, this is great for visual learners. Another um, activity that we have found interesting for visual learners in particular is the use of picture jigsaw puzzles. So uh, probably you have worked with uh, puzzles in face-to-face -face classes, but how can we do this in virtual environments? Well, we have found this site, uh, you can see here on top, jigsawplanet.com. Uh, this is a site that has lots of ready-made puzzles about all kinds of topics. And the good thing about this site is that you can also create your own puzzles um, and you can choose the level of difficulty. So uh, if you have um, different courses, you can adapt them to your needs. Uh, going back to, the, to what we mentioned before, this um, idea of sharing, which is much easier um, um, these days with, with, um, with the internet, you can make your puzzles public so that you can share them with other teachers around the world. Okay, okay great. <clears throat> great, Maru. Um, another resource that we can use to focus on this characteristic of young learners is the image quiz on WordWall. Have you heard of this site, wordwall.net? It's a great site. It's full, full of different kinds of activities. Yeah. Uh, you just need to register. Yeah. And then you can choose from all the activities shared by teachers. Um, here we want to show you an image quiz, yeah, which has proven to be really engaging. Now, when you click on play, what happens? A picture will be revealed, yeah, little by little, yeah? And if the students know what the picture is, yeah, they will press that red button you see in the middle at the bottom, yeah? Then choices will show up. And if they click on the right choice, yeah, the picture will be revealed and they will get a point. Okay. okay, but let's work together, people. Sure, yeah, that's a great idea. Good. Okay, so we are going yeah, to uh, work on an activity on Nearpod. Okay, um, this, uh, this is a very yeah, popular site. Okay, we are going to share the link yeah, in the chat box in a minute, let me, okay. Good, okay. Just a sec. Okay, I'm going to copy this and you will see it in the chat. Okay. Good. There it goes. Okay. So, what are we going to do? First, you're going to click on the site. Yeah. You're going to enter your name, and we will read the instructions together. Okay. So, let's wait for some participants to join. Good, okay, I see that some participants are joining. Okay, so while the rest of the participants join this link in Nearpod, what are we going to do? We are going to look at a 360 picture on the next slide, but wait, let's yeah, listen to all the instructions. Once you get into the picture, you will explore it. How? 
you will use your mouse to zoom in, to zoom out, yes, to move all around, to the left, to the right, all around this market. And while you are exploring yeah, the picture, make sure to remember as many food items as possible. Okay, so Andre, let me see <coughs> if I got that right. Can I explore the market all around with my mouse? Yes. Okay, so can I move upwards, downwards, to the left, to the right? Yes, you can zoom uh -huh. in and zoom out. Oh, you can that's also great. use the arrow keys on your keyboard. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. So, are you ready, people? There you have the picture. You will have one minute to explore it. Okay, Maro, do you think that'll do? I think so. Okay, people, the picture is gone. Time's up, okay? Now, let's answer the question you have here on this collaborative board. What food items can you remember? Let's write down five examples. Where in that box you have at the bottom of the notice board. Wow, peaches, apples, bananas, berries, mangoes, mm. seafood, strawberries, wow. <coughs> Great people. Oh, even with, with a picture. Great. Look. Oh my God, that's fantastic. Yeah. Well, I guess you're really curious. Mm -hmm. You wanted to check every little single spot in this market. Okay. Just like kids. Yeah. Uh, kids are not only curious, yeah, we can get back yeah, to our slides in the presentation. Yes. Okay. And kids are not only curious when taking a look at things, but also they like to touch things, right? <clears throat> Young learners are curious. They like to experiment with things around them, right? Okay, now in a face-to-face -face class, we can play, for example, what's in the bag. Yeah, very yeah, traditional yeah, activity. Yeah, we just bring it back. Yeah, we put things inside. Yeah, we ask students to guess what's inside just by touching the items. Yeah, but how can we apply this in a virtual environment? Yeah. Well, for example, we can play show, touch, and tell. Mm, that is, we can ask students to go fetch, for example, some food they have in the kitchen. Next, ask them to show and touch the item on the camera and tell the class how that item feels. For instance, oh, it feels rough or it feels smooth, hard, soft, etc. Mm. Okay, so um, as we have mentioned before, kids are uh, also auditory learners. So what does this mean? Well, it means that uh, many kids learn best through their sense of hearing. So they get more engaged with audio materials and known verbal sounds, such as clapping or music. So uh, to address this characteristic of young learners, we could make use of chants and songs 
we could work with stories either read out loud or played on video. Uh, we could also play bingo and we could work on different listening activities. So um, as uh, I know that you have probably played bingo in face-to-face uh, -face classes, but how can we do this in virtual environments? Well, um, we have found this site, which is really easy, easy to use, and um, it's called Bingo Baker. You can see the uh, address here. Uh, the good thing is that there are many ready-made bingo cards. Uh, as you can see here, we typed, we wanted to search for a bingo on food, and you can find um, cards with pictures, with only with words, or both with words and pictures. So uh, once you choose one card, in this case we have chosen this one, uh, you will be able to share it with your students. Okay, so once your students get this link, they will generate their own card so that all of them have a different card with random items. Um, once they have a card, so a te the teacher will start calling the different items. Uh, as you can see here on the right, there's um, um, a collection of items you can use to call. And if they got the item, they can simply click on the picture and they will get crosses as you can see here. Yeah. So um, this addresses the auditory um, characteristics because they have to pay attention to what they are listening. Right? So yeah. Andre. Great. Yeah, I love that. Okay. But another example could be the traditional listening activities we can find on this well-known site, live worksheets. I'm sure all of you yeah, know this site. It's wonderful because there are plenty of activities. Yeah, But isn't it a lot more motivating and, and rewarding when we create our own activities? Yes, our own material. Now, to do so on this site, yeah, you just need an activity, for example, on a PDF yeah, format, maybe an image to illustrate the activity. And of course, if it's a listening activity, an audio file. So it's very easy. First, you register, yeah, then you log in, and you click on Make Interactive Worksheets. Yeah. You get to get started, that's the yeah, the, the choice, the last one here on when you display the menu. But if you're not so sure what to do, there are video tutorials, very easy ones that you can access mm, to help you create an, an activity, in this case, a listening activity. Yeah? On the next slide, yeah, we want to show you one activity we created. Yeah, a very simple one. It's a drag and drop listening activity. We have a dialogue, yeah. We have the word bank at the bottom, yeah. We have a picture illustrating this activity, and we have yeah the audio file on the top right corner, yes. So we want yeah to encourage you to try creating activities on this site and share them with the whole community. Okay, so. Another uh, key characteristic of young learners that we should bear in mind when preparing our lessons is that um, kids love interaction. So kids are usually very talkative, they love to express their opinions, and they enjoy sharing their own experiences. So some activities um, which um, you, could, you could do to work on this um, are mixers. So uh, I'm sure you have probably tried this in, a, in traditional classes, but how can we do this in a virtual class? Well, uh, you could have students use breakout rooms and work on the assignment there. 
And then uh, when they get back to the main or the general room, you can have a spokesperson uh, to report on their findings. Um, to address these characteristics, it's also a good idea to make use of role plays or surveys and uh, to engage students in pair or group discussions. Um, to, to, so that students can express their opinions on, in, in online classes, we have found this site, which is very easy to use also. Um, but in this case, you need to log in as we, any, with, with many other sites. Uh, it's called Classkick, as you can see here. So you will log in, log in as a teacher and you can create different lessons. In this case, uh, we are going to show you this activity as uh, it's on the topic of food, which is the one um, we are working on. In this case, we wanted students to record their opinions uh, on what's your favorite food. Uh, so we, we've created a slide with some text, some pictures, also uh, an example for students to know what to do. And um, when students get the, the assignment that you can share with them with a link, uh, they will be able to click on the microphone icon and to record their answers. The good thing about this site is that then once the assignment is completed, you will be able to um, see students work individually. So for example, here, three students have completed an assignment. So I see their work in uh, different slides, on different slides. So if you want to access one slide in particular, uh, made by one of your students, you will find this icon like you would on other apps, yeah, the, the, the audio icon. So you can simply, oh, excuse me. You can simply click there um, and listen to your students' assignment. The good thing is that you can also leave comments on uh, their work. So Andre, uh, what else can we do to um, boost children's interaction in class? Okay, another app that we can use yeah, to do that, to foster social interaction in a virtual class is Flipgrid. Yeah, have you heard of this site, flipgrid.com? <clears throat> it's a tool that we can use yeah, to have students complete a task by recording their own answers on video. Okay, so it's very easy. You just go yeah, to flipgrid.com, you sign up, then you log in, and you can create yeah, uh, topics. Yeah? For example, here, yeah, this is what students see when you share the activity, the assignment. Yeah? Uh, you see the title. We gave this activity a title, what's for dinner tonight. We um, um, included instructions, what to do. Okay, we also included a picture to illustrate the task. And once the students get this assignment, they will click on add response. They will record the video, they can preview it, they can add stickers, yes. They can even crop the video if they think a part of it is not so good. And once they submit yeah, their assignment, on the teacher's side, you will be able to see their productions. But what's the funny part of this? That their partners can also watch their uh, friends' videos and they can make comments yeah, on their work, on their partner's work, just like they do when they post something on Instagram or on any other social network. Okay, so it is also true that kids love challenges and games. So um, gamification is key in a classroom if you want to boost engagement and collaboration. So um, it's, um, the uh, students are often thrilled to participate in different kinds of competitions. Let's take a look at some of them. So you could play Pictionary, uh, now there are great sites in which you can do this online. 
um, you could you could play dominoes, word change. You can have them work with some trivia, also guessing games and board games. So um, we'd like now to play a game with you. Um, let's take a look at this. When you get the link in a second uh, via chat box, you will find this. So you need to click on start. This game is also on the topic of food, as you can see, uh, particularly about partitives. So when you click on start, you will see the screenshot, the screen that you can see on the right here. Uh, on, in this game, you need to click on the correct expressions. So this game is called whack a mole. So if one of the moles has a correct expression, you're going to click on them. Okay, so um, you will get the link via chat box. Please join us. And, and one thing, people, there are different levels. So let's start with the easy one. We're going to give you a couple of minutes so that you can explore the game. Okay, so Andre, do you think this is enough? Yeah, I think that'll do. I guess they they, they are in the yeah, difficult level now. <laughs> yeah, I yes. guess so. Okay. okay, they can keep on playing it yeah, uh, after yes, the webinar. Yes, you can save the link. Good, okay. Now, another tool yeah, uh, that we can use is the well-known Kahoot, okay? I'm sure you have probably played Kahoot before, yeah? But sometimes we find that the internet connection is not that good, yeah? Uh, that it's uh, sometimes slow for students, yeah? And, uh, and, and it's not possible for them to answer as quickly as they would like to, right? So, what we can do is assign Kahoot, a Kahoot activity, as a self-paced one. How do we do that? Okay, we get into our Kahoot account, we go to a, one activity we, we want them to work on, and we click on play. When you get there, yeah, a screen will show up, yeah, teach, that is the one we choose, yeah, when we want to play live or assign. So if you want to assign this Kahoot activity, you just click there and this, yeah, what you see on the right of this uh, slide, yeah, you will see that you have to choose a date, yeah, and a time. Yeah, players should complete this activity before the date you choose. Mm -hmm. And then when you're ready, you click on create. Once you click there, you get a link and you can share this link yeah, with your students via email, Google Classroom, or you can embed it in your LMS platform, just as we do in our campus. Mm -hmm. Great, but 
let's play one more game with you people. We really want you to play this game on Nearpod again. It's called Time to Climb, okay? So I'm going to be sharing the link. Let me, let me get it, okay? Okay, I have to, okay, let me see. Good, I'm going to see if I can move this a little bit so I can access. Let me, let me move it, okay. Good, and I'm going to share it in the chat with you, okay. Let's see if I'm giving you the right one. Okay, there you go. Okay, and okay, I'm I'm waiting for you. Remember, you have to enter your name, you have to join the lesson, and you will choose a character. There are wonderful characters to choose from: penguins, lions, bears, frogs. Okay. And mm, you will choose a character and you will wait for the teacher to start the game. Okay, so let's wait for a few seconds. Yeah, okay, I see some people. Excuse me, Andrea, can you share the link on the chat box? Uh, oh, didn't I? Mm, I? I don't think so. We cannot see it. That's oh. all right, don't worry. Okay, okay, okay. let me Thank see. You. Yes. Good. Okay. Sorry, I, I thought it was there. Oh, wait. Yeah, sorry. Okay, there it is. Sorry, sorry. That's all right. Thank you. Okay. Good. So let me... Okay, there. Okay, so let's wait for some players to join. Okay, I see that some of you are already connected. Good. Okay. There are lots of characters you can choose yeah, from and yeah, you can be different kinds of animals here. Yeah, bears, frogs, penguins. Oh, Nili, you're there. I see you there, good. Okay, Adriana. Oh, you're all jumping. <laughs> That's great. You're ready to start this game. Okay, Lily, good. Okay, Cristina, Mayra, wow. Mara too. Oh, that's wonderful. Guadalupe. Great. Okay. There are more people getting in. So let's wait for a minute. Okay. There we have Jacqueline. Jackie, probably. Good. Okay. One more, two. Let's see who else is coming. Okay. There we have Grace, too. Okay. There we have Gabby, and I guess there's uh, one more person. Yeah, let's see, let's see. Okay, let's start, people. Okay, you're doing well.
Okay. Bye, <laughs> Good people. Great. That's great. Maida, you got the first prize here. Thank you. Gabby. Thank you, Andrea. <laughs> and Gabby and Lily. Okay. Okay. So I guess you really enjoyed yeah, this yeah. time to climb activity. <laughs> Yeah, it's very, very uh, motivating. Kids love it. Yeah. Okay. Mm. okay. But let's so. let's keep on working with some of the key characteristics. Yeah. Of Thanks, young learners. So as we said before, uh, kids need routine and need routines, and they feel um, they feel at ease in a safe environment. With routines, they feel more confident because they know what to expect. Therefore, they are uh, more likely to participate actively in class. So let's take a look at how can we uh, have some routines in class. Well, um, we could use a hello or a goodbye song in every class. We could also um, write on the board today's agenda and have one of the students um, read it aloud. aloud. Uh, we could also have um, the classroom language on a poster or on a board so that uh, they can use it if they need to. And um, they can, um, we could also uh, consider the sound level in, in class, how to manage the sound level in class. Uh, we could also make use of classroom signs so that students know what to do in each stage of a class. But let's take a look at some ways in which we can do this, which you probably do, which you probably did uh, before the pandemic in face-to-face -face classes in virtual classes. So we have found this app um, that is called Classroom Screen. Um, the good thing about this app is that you don't need to uh, log to sign up. You don't need to sign up. You can simply go to the site and click here on Launch. And when you get there, um, you can make use of different widgets. Um, excuse me for a second. I will uh, resume the sharing in a sec. I think there's something there. Great. So um, as you can see, there's a widget in which you can write. So as we said, said before, you can include today's agenda and some classroom language. You could embed um, your hello song video or you, your goodbye song video. And well, as you can see, you can also um, include a background, but uh, that's not that does not that does that is not related with routines. Some other uh, widgets that you can use uh, for classroom management is the tool for sound level. As you can see here, uh, you can choose different sound thresholds, and you can activate this 
bell that you can see on the left. So if students exceed uh, the noise limit, that bell will ring. Uh, as we mentioned before, in the case of classroom signs, there are ready-made signs, which are very, very easy to use. You can just switch from one to the other. In this case, uh, you can see one that says silence, but there are others that say work together, ask a neighbor, um, etc. cetera. Um, this site also has a built-in timer, which is very useful for activities in general, and uh, especially for games. And the last uh, item, number four, is a, a traffic light. This traffic light um, you could adapt for different purposes. For example, um, you could use it for a similar uh, purpose um, to, the, to the sound level tool uh, for, for a similar purpose. Uh, if your students are making too much noise, you could click on the red light or uh, if your students are speaking in Spanish, you could also click on the red light and, of course, the green light if they did something well, of course. <laughs> we are not just going to use the red light, of course. Great. So uh, this, uh, this app, as you can see, the widgets here are uh, at the bottom in, on this menu. There are many, many widgets. Uh, some other widgets that this has and can help you with uh, having different uh, arrangements in class is the um, uh, name picker and also the group maker. There's a, there's a widget that um, creates groups randomly. You can select the number of members that you can have um, in each group so that you can have students work in groups in different uh, activities. Andre, you are muted. Great, Maru. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it happens all the time. Okay. Now, uh, throughout this webinar, we have seen several tools and apps we can use in our classes taking into account the characteristics of young learners. So let's reflect on the activities which we have worked on together today. How? Well, you will join a breakout room, okay? And you will discuss in groups the following question. What characteristics of young learners have we addressed in the activities we worked on today, yeah, together, right? And remember that you will choose yeah, a secretary yeah, to complete the chart we will be sharing in the chat box. Yeah, this chart, yeah, you will access a Google Doc link. In the groups, in the break of rooms, you will discuss, yeah, uh, and the secretary will complete the chart. Okay, is that clear? Okay, so okay. Are you um, there? There we have Fair it. Thank you, Grace. Thank you, Grace. Okay. Okay. Make sure you, you go to the link and we will start the breakout rooms now. Thank you.
Okay, so um, as you can see, let's take a look at your answers. Great, you have completed, uh, you have checked many of the characteristics, visual, auditory, tactile, uh, computations, Great. So, as you can see, many of the activities we have used today uh, considered um, different characteristics of young learners. So, when we prepare uh, material for our lessons, it's essential that we cater for our students' needs. It is also true that um, in our classrooms, we might find different kinds of learners. For example, some students um, might be mainly visual or mainly auditory. However, uh, this doesn't mean that a visual activity won't be effective for an auditory learner, but it can rather help uh, that student uh, develop other learning styles. Okay, people. Well, now we are open to your questions. Yes, if you want, you can type them in the chat box. Okay, and we will be very happy to answer them if we can, <laughs> right? Okay, thank you, Gabby. Thank you. Uh, excuse me, maybe we can start by answering Nilia's question. Sure. Uh, the one she, she asked before, okay? Mm -hmm. About okay. assignments for yeah, Word. I was role. typing, but it takes a while. <laughs> okay, so you can okay. ask the question, Nilia, thank you. Shall I type my question then? Or yeah, I... yeah. Oh, no, I'll just share it, Nili. Yeah. yeah. It takes a while. I don't know how much time we have. No, I was wondering with the precisely with Wacamole. I use WordWall a lot, but I don't normally share the links. I share screen and, you know, students tell me, you know, if it's a drag and drop or, or one of those to, you know, click the card and it, it flips, you know, but I have never used, I have never used virtually Wacamole, for example. What do you do? You, you simply... What I don't understand is the mechanics. You, you, you share the link with students and they play on their own. How do you do it like that? Like we did today? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, what, what I usually do, Nili, is first I show, uh, I show them the activity so they know what it's about, especially if I choose a different template, right? And then uh, I uh, ask them to work on their own. Okay, I always put yeah the uh, word wall uh, link embedded in our campus, so I get the uh, the the embed code, yeah, and I uh, create an activity there on the campus, oh, yeah, great. in our LMS platform, but and I share the screen, yeah, to show them the activity. It's hidden for them, so they have to look at my screen, so they know what it's about then I, may, I make it visible and then they play on their own. Yeah, and they, yeah, if it's an activity, they can use the leaderboard, okay? Yeah, they, they love, yeah, entering their names there and see who got the, the, the first, yeah, place. Mm -hmm. Okay, how, how can you make sure, is there a way like, for example, the one that you presented today, Neopod was interactive, so you could see students were there. So that was great. But yes. In case of Word Wall, is there a way for you to see if they're actually playing? Or not in word wall yes um no you you i mean you know they have been playing because yeah they enter their names in the leaderboard i clean the leaderboard eh, before we play it so i know that they are there yeah and they always say oh you always get first yeah and they yeah uh, and they make comments so i and, and you listen to their uh 
clicking and the, the sound because they leave the, the microphones on. Oh, great. Yeah, and I was so, wondering because probably with the teens, I was planning, I have older children this year. And as Paolo said, sometimes they are quite apathetic. <laughs> and yeah. you don't know if they're there or not. You don't even know sometimes if they are there. You want them to, you know, turn on their cameras. They don't. So you don't know if they are even there. So I was wondering if there's a way to check if they are actually doing the activity as they are in um, the airport or the other supervisor. Yes, no, I think that uh, Nearport has, last, has that option and maybe some other apps too, like Classic. In uh, on Classic, you can see if they have accessed and if have if they have uh, completed the assignment. That's yeah. uh, super clear. But with Word World, uh, apart from the leaderboard, I think that's uh, yeah. not possible. Yeah, the okay. same uh, applies to Flipgrid. Yeah, on Flipgrid, you also have yeah the the chance to see if they have worked on the task because they the the recording the video they recorded yeah is submitted there. But on World World, yeah, um, you just, yeah, rely that they are there, yeah, doing it. You leave it. some yeah. minutes, you leave some minutes. Yes, and, and I usually screen. keep the, 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 the screen shared. So once they are yeah. ready, we take one or two of the questions to do, yeah, uh, the, the, the game, to go through the game together to round up. Yeah, and sometimes they make comments. Oh, this was difficult. Oh, uh, oh, I didn't know what to do here. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I have to study the vocabulary. Yeah, but they love. They love all the word wall. Yeah, activities. Yeah, especially okay. when you find a new okay. one. Okay. So here oh, are sorry. some questions. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> yes, there's another question that was. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, um, Pablo, to answer Pablo's question, I think that. Um, well, if you are working with teenagers, uh, probably uh, this this kind of feeling is uh, more common, and you will find it. They, but they um, are they are preteens. They they are probably 11, okay. 12, 13, more or less. Right. So, so yeah. uh, I think that the best would be to um, be. Uh, to, to, to actually uh, be, to actually pay attention to them to to do the, to be able to actually cater for their needs because mm -hmm. um, if if let's suppose that we make use of lots of uh, visual activities or auditory activities and maybe uh, if we do that we are uh, leaving some students behind so we can yeah. uh, combine a wide range of activities to tackle um that's that um different learning styles right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you can make good use of flip grade yeah kids uh, right. teenagers love making yeah. their own videos no definitely all of the <laughs> things that you showed are really wonderful really fantastic because you know they give me a little bit more and thanks to jackie the other day she came to my class just to observe my classes and and well uh i think this is all great because i can put a little bit of all the things uh to make right. it more engaging yeah there's one more question gabby says how much time does it take us to create activities in on nearpod well uh probably if it's the first time it's going to take you like 20 minutes but uh or 30 minutes but once you get used to how it works, um, I would say probably 15 minutes. Yes. Yeah, it's yeah. as um, with any other site, it takes uh, maybe more when you are starting to get to know how it works, but then uh, it's, um, if, you, if you consider how much time it takes and how useful it is, I mean, it's a, a great <laughs> app. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I think, oh, the uh, I think oh. we covered all the questions. Oh, okay. yes. great. Yeah. I think Good. so. So, um, thank you very much for coming today. Thanks to you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Claps to the team. Oh. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much.
Okay. So You're thank welcome. you. Uh, yes. Thank you all for being here. And thank you, uh, Andrea and Maria Eugenia, for this mm -hmm. uh, wonderful webinar and for sharing uh, your mm -hmm. best practices with all of us. Uh, I know you put a lot of time and energy in preparing this webinar. So thank you very mm -hmm. much on, on behalf of ICANA and ICANA teachers. Okay, so thank you and hope you can attend the next webinar on November 5th on how to teach teens in a virtual environment. Mm -hmm. There, Pablo, maybe you will get your answer. <laughs> All uh, right. Okay. okay, a more focused answer. So thank you very much for coming. Hope you can join us in the next, the next edition of ICANA webinar series. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.